Bonjour. Have you ever wished that you could wear a dress made of hair? Probably not. That would be weird. Well, I have. Okay, so I'm going this summer to the World Cosplay Summit. It's like the biggest cosplay competition in the world that we won last year. <laughs> Congratulations, Team France! Uh, your judge, put your son, if you please present the trophies. And that means my friend Beryl and I are invited to Japan this summer again, but to be judges for the final. And there are going to be plenty of events, including a red carpet with officials, with an orchestra, with plenty of cameras. Last year, as contestants, when we did that, we were not very well dressed. This was totally last minute. We looked terrible. This is... Do you call that a costume? I'm a fraud. So this time, we obviously have to bring a little more prestige to the red carpet. Now you may or may not be familiar to the character Bayonetta. Miss me, baby. It's a Japanese video game. She's like this super sexy witch with magic powers and gun shoes and her outfits are made out of her hair, her magic hair. Her animation is very spicy and her hair, which is her clothes, is also her magic. So when she casts a spell, she gets naked. Uh, it's a whole thing. It's, it's Japanese. But I want to make something very glamorous, so get ready to see her like you've never seen before. We are going to unleash the fashionista and hopefully make something elegant for the red carpet. And I need to add hair to this gown. I already made the corset. Already with some hair here. Blue, blue, blue. If you want a tutorial on this, I made a full video about it, but now let's turn it into a gown. Let's go! Allez! So these are all the wigs that I have. This one is super long and I already removed a few whips, whips, blah, blah, whips to add on the corset if you remember. This one is actually a front lace wig that I won. It's a very good quality wig. It's from other wigs and I won it as a prize for a wig contest that I did with my hair dress. <laughs> I should put an image somewhere. So this one I'm obviously not going to destroy. And then we have those two wigs that I had for cat's eye. They are super cheap and not very well fitted. I even removed a few wefts here. So these two will be most of the decoration on the dress. But they are a bit curly, so I need to fix that with boiling water. This technique of using hot water on synthetic wigs works very well, but since the last time I did that, I remembered that I had <laughs> I had bought an iron, which will be much more efficient on the second wig. But it works if you don't have one. Also, can you just enjoy my drying technique? Thank you. Now unpick all the hair until you have a bald head. It is the next day! So I did spend the full day yesterday just unpicking the two wigs. It's all here, it's all the different wefts. And some of them are quite long. So I think it will be enough for the skirt as I don't want it to be all covered in hair. <laughs> it would have definitely be easier to just buy the wefts, but I always want to try and use the things that I have. What's the point of having a big stash of materials if you don't use them? Even if it makes you use a whole day just detangling things. So now that I see all that I have, let's just solve the construction issues. So I did some testing to try and make the hair grow out of the fabric and for that I have hand sewn this in place and by poking a few holes and having the hair grow out of it I can make like a gradient without having the whole skirt covered. So with that in mind, let's just design. We want a big long skirt that starts just below the waist so it doesn't impact the waist of the corset. And I want a big slit at the front because remember this is for Japan and it's going to be very hot. I need to add some color. So in red we have the seams, in yellow it's where I want to sew the weft and a zipper here. Here we go!
Let's take an old bed sheet to drape the shape on the mannequin. Then another bed sheet to make the mock-up that I can try on. You know I'm always making mock-ups out of old bed sheets, but I'm keeping the best ones for my bed. That's why I'm excited to say that this video is sponsored by our friends at Brooklyn. They are a luxury sheets company based in Brooklyn. Their philosophy is they believe that everyone should have access to beautiful home essentials, high quality without the crazy price tags. So here is the thing, Brooklyn is offering a deal for you. If you use my code Hazariel at the link below, you will get a $20 off any purchase over a hundred dollars. That's pretty good. We spend a lot of time in our beds, about one third of our lives or more if you are like me. So it makes sense that our sheets should be super comfortable. Plus they offer over 20 colors and pattern options so you can find the perfect look for your bedroom. I chose all graphite because I have dark plans for this room but you can match it to your bedroom. I personally have their Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle. It saves 25% because it includes a core sheet set, extra pillowcases and a duvet cover. I have to say these sheets from Brooklyn are seriously heavenly. They are the comfiest sheets I've ever owned. Perfect for getting that ideal nap or naps and keeping you refreshed after those endless sewing hours. Once again, don't forget to use my code Azariel at the link below to gain $20 of any purchase over $100. Happy shopping! And thank you so much to Brooklyn for sponsoring this video. Now back to work! I'm using the mock-up as a template to cut all my pieces, starting with the lining. So I can use that to make slight alterations before cutting the velvet. I'm just removing a bit of the volume of the skirt on these, but keeping it in the back so it's a bit more flat in the front. Please enjoy my socks. Wow! And what do we need to add to the skirt? Pockets! This cotton velvet handles the iron if I just keep it just above the surface. When you are sewing with velvet, it's very important that you have all your pieces cut in the same way. Because this fabric has like little hair, so they can be shiny in one way and just... Does this work? No. So we have the two sides of our pocket. Notice that on one side, I did an extra line of stitching. It is to prevent the pocket from going like this and keep it this way. And I left a little bit of the seam free so I can sew the two pocket pieces together. We have the lining, we have the skirt and with the pockets. So now let's just make it special and add the hair. On the test piece that I did, I have the weft is sewn on the inside and I managed to get some hair out here and there. So it looks like it's kind of growing from the fabric. That's kind of gross, I know. <laughs> But it's fun. Then I can take the hair out and make it more like a gradient, like more and more towards the bottom. I have measured so I should have enough for all the seams. So I'm not really sure how it's going to turn out. Maybe it will be horrible. We'll try. <laughs> I want to use this little hook to poke holes through the outside and pick up the hair and pull it on the outside. But this hook does not go through the fabric. Because this fabric is too strong. So I'm just going to polish this until it is pointy enough so I can stab this. Can you see the before and after? It does work, but it's kind of messy and still really hard, so I think I should find another solution. Super big needle and this can go through this. And then getting the hair through. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so I found a new needle and I think I don't even need the hook thing. Getting this through the needle and then through the fabric. This is much neater and faster than these two. So I think we have our technique, but it's going to take a while. And thus began the quest of poking hair through a dress. 
each strand one by one for a thousand years. And so much brushing. Ugh. Honestly, there are a few hundred strands on this dress and I had to thread all of them through the needle. I didn't think this through from the start. <laughs> So I've done three of the seams, that took five hours. So I have four more to do. I'm not again spending hundreds of hours on the costume, but I'm not sure that the result is good enough. Look, uh, hi. So I like the Morticia Adams vibe of this. See how it's growing out of the fabric. I think it looks very cool, even if it's a bit creepy. So with the corset on, I think that the hair looks perfect. I can add more lace like here, because I have a few left. So what if we had a lot of lace uh, around the slit and a piece of this lace appliques on top of each of the hair? I think it could tie the whole cascading hair through the dress and link it with the corset, but still a bit subtle. I don't know, it's hard to make choices on a project that's kind of weird like this and trying to make it believable and not too ugly, but still a bit creepy. Okay, I just have to trust the process now. Which is a bit intimidating when it means 10 hours of hand sewing, then you can see the result. Which I might not like. We'll see! So that means more hair and also I have to go to a family weekend. And that means making sure that the hair doesn't tangle too much while I travel, so I have to braid everything. I have to add all the beaded lace, so I'm just cutting it up and prepping it for sewing, just pinning it in place. So I should cut it like this. Cutting up the tool from the lace applique also takes a while because you have to follow all the little details and pin the little leaves and also you will have to sew it all by hand. <laughs> and suddenly you are in a moving car with your parents, which is not great to do some sewing. Or in Airbnb's garden or couch. Or in a car again. Almost done. I did not think it would take so long, but... Once I did one seam, I had to finish. <laughs> I have the hair that comes from all the seams. If I add a little bit of decoration that I cut in half, I think if I do that on every seam, it will tie the skirt with the corsets with the same textures. And I still have the hair coming out of the dress and I don't have to do all the little pulling from all the seam, which took forever. A few applique lace to cut and then we can assemble everything on this weird project. I really have a strange job. Making all these nonsense projects. Filming and making the process interesting for you, I hope. You see half of what I do, which is all the crafting, but actually half of the time I'm on my phone or my computer doing all the editing and all the different things that all the platforms require. I'm actually making less costumes than what I did before I started making a YouTube channel. And that's why I'm so grateful for my Patreons to giving me the time to make this full time. I invest everything onto the channel. Right now I'm saving to maybe buy a new camera. I'm really trying to make my videos better and more interesting and more entertaining. It actually makes me so happy when I hear someone that I inspire to just craft something with their hands. This is what I've always wanted to do, so just thank you so much for being there. Even just a like or sharing the videos, it helps so much, so thank you again. Uh, ah oui, let's back to work. I broke the needle. I'm finished with the decoration. Even like this, I think it looks so cool. That could even look good as a cape. So now the zipper and then I can close the lining. I'm adding a zipper that I removed from something, a bag maybe. It's not invisible, but it will be good enough for this project because the back is not visible. I want the hem to sit nicely so the hair can be like spread out around me. So I need to make the hem more stiff. And for that, I'm using some scraps of horse hair. It's this sort of canvas, kind of rigid, and it's cut on the bias. It has some stretch. Oh no! 
I've sewn the lining and the horse hair together and I'm making sure that the horse hair stays in place with a herringbone stitch. <laughs> this stitch is fast and almost invisible from the outside. And the lining is attached using the bag lining technique. So I just tried it on. It's. Uh, I think the effect is pretty cool. I'm just going to chop the hair a little bit, and especially in the front, here and here, because I'm just stepping on it. <laughs> and with that, the dress is done, and it is time for the reveal. Boss ass. Bitch. Yet. This is not the finished costume with all the weird accessories, but I think this is a finished gown that is very glamorous, which is a little bit of creepy. And now that I see it, I think it will be a perfect start for making a Morticia Adams costume for Halloween. What do you think? Yes. <laughs>